So listen to this. Right now, Vladimir Putin's government may be pumping propaganda into the homes of millions of Americans who have no idea they're watching Putin TV. I'm talking about Russia Today, or RT. It's a cable channel that is available in a lot of homes, including mine in New York and many here in Washington. We're not exactly sure how many. I tried to figure out this week how many homes it's in, and there is no reliable number. But RT claims it reaches 85 million people here in the United States. It's owned and operated by the Russian government. But here in the U.S., a lot of its reporters and anchors are Americans. And this week, there was a lot of new evidence that RT is something other than just an ordinary cable news channel. As the crisis between the United States and Russia grew ever more tense, the tone of RT was clearly pro-Russian and at times anti-American. And as people began to notice, well, all hell broke loose at RT. On Tuesday, anchor Abby Martin decided to break ranks. Before we wrap up the show, I wanted to say something from my heart about the ongoing political crisis in Ukraine and Russia's military occupation of Crimea. Just because I work here for RT doesn't mean I don't have editorial independence. And I can't stress enough how strongly I am against any state intervention in a sovereign nation's affairs. What Russia did is wrong. That went viral right away. And one day after that statement, Washington correspondent Liz Wall simply walked out of the job. I cannot be part of network funded by the Russian government that whitewashes the actions of Putin. I'm proud to be an American and believe in disseminating the truth. And that is why, after this newscast, I'm resigning. Liz Wall joins me now here in Washington. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. When was the exact moment that you realized you had to leave Russia today? Wednesday was a turning point for me. I, I mm. saw censorship like I've never seen it before. And, uh, you know, certain parts of my questions being edited out, um, uh, stories that paint the opposition as strictly pro uh, fascist, uh, the right wing parts of the uh, of uh, characterizing the opposition as a whole like that. Mm. And, and I think that's that's dangerous. And I think that throughout this conflict, that's the line that he wants, or, or the picture that he wants to portray you say of he, the you crisis. You say Putin. Yeah, Vladimir Putin, <laughs> yes. It's Mr. not as Putin. if he was literally editing questions out. So who was? What kind of questions were being the taken out? The news director. Out? The news director. Actually, I had an interview with uh, Congressman Ron Paul, and uh, the news director wrote very specific questions. I have them here. They're very loaded questions. I, I could read them, but I'd have to go through my email right now. Um, I didn't go by them because they were absolutely ludicrous, but mm. I did ask some of my own questions. One of the questions that I asked uh, used the words Russian military intervention. And uh, when it was played, they, they cut out that line because, as we know, the, the Kremlin doesn't want us to... to, to to see it as military intervention, they want to see their involvement in in Ukraine so as, you, as a, a humanitarian very clear crisis. Of censorship on the part of the uh, absolutely, management. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Take yes. me back in time a few years. Uh, you had been at the channel almost three years. Uh, what was the pitch from RT when uh, they offered to bring you on board? I mean, I was a little, I was like, I was a little bit curious. I was like, what's this? <laughs> what's this RT about? And the way that they pitched it to me, that they're like, we tell. They told me that this would be an opportunity to tell stories that the mainstream media ignores mm. um, and, and to me that sounded I mean as, as a journalist and I aspire to to be a journalist and to further my career that sounded really that sounded great to me uh, uh, their motto was question more um, and so uh, you know obviously I, I knew that I knew the geopolitical stances of Russia I, I knew kind of the conflict there I knew that it was state-funded and, uh, but uh, I didn't realize, perhaps I was a little bit naive, I didn't realize the extent to which um, it would actually be used as a propaganda machine. And Did more, you notice it right away once you arrived? Um, I think I, I, I noticed it in a way, uh, in the way that they, the, the stories that are presented, that they, they're picked in a way that tend to be anti-West anti and, and, and uh, and, and, and pro-Kremlin, <laughs> to put it simply. I've seen you say in other interviews that you've seen America bashing going on there. Let me play a clip from another, uh, well, one of your former colleagues, a segment called Propaganda Watch, and then let's discuss it on the other side. Sure. The general picture that you get is that of the U.S. mainstream media jumping on anything, verified or unverified, to present Russia as an aggressor without much or any knowledge of what's happening on the ground. And U.S. officials, well, they continue their self-righteous tirade while being engaged in actual acts of aggression around the world with innocent people dying every day in drone strikes or from violence in countries that were destabilized by the U.S. 
this is the thing. I think it's absolutely, you, sh you should be, the, the motto is question more, and you absolutely sh should be investigating uh, things, uh, corruption and things like that. But, but when it's done in a way to, to promote uh, the, the objectives, the, the foreign policy objectives of a dictatorial government, I think that's, that's when it gets kind of troubling. And, and, and uh, I mean, there's been alarm bells all along, but I think with this crisis in Crimea, the censorship and the propaganda was hyped up to, to a degree that I've never seen it before. And at, at that point, uh, for me, that was a red line. What did you do after that on-air resignation? We see that you know, at 5.30 p.m. It was up on YouTube immediately. What did you do? Did you talk to your bosses? Did you clean out your desk? What happened? Uh, after that, my, uh, the news director said, Liz, can we talk? And uh, so I went into to the office and he said, why, why did you do that? Mm. And I said, um, I feel uncomfortable with, uh, I, I voiced my concerns many times. Um, I was unhappy about censoring that interview. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this is a propaganda machine and this is not something that I want to be a part of. But it sounds like in this case there haven't been repercussions since Wednesday. Um, repercussions in terms of, I mean, um, RT has come out and has, I mean, they're... they're Criticized cr you. Yeah, there was a stunt yeah. for you to They, they said that it was that a, a political, a pol uh, political stunt? Is a self-promotional stunt? A self-promotional stunt. I mean, all I can say is that that's not true. It, I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what the fallout was going to be. I knew that it was something that I had to say. Um, I mean, I think you go into journalism, and I don't know if this is a naive, naive of me to think that um, journalists should should try to remain as objective as possible. I mean, I think I, I you know, it's about disseminating the truth. And um, certainly, there's a discussion that can be had uh, on all ends of the spe spectrum of journalistic uh, objectivity. But uh, for me, um, when it was so, so, so skewed and so far from being objective. Uh, uh, I think I, the viewers and the world needed to know what, what the truth is about this station. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you.